Hey guys and welcome to Petroped and welcome to an unscheduled video but I promise you this one's quite special. Now then, almost exactly a year ago, I was given access to some exclusive video footage by the team at Ineos Grenadier of the car actually moving. Up until that point, we'd seen some spy shots and, and a few bits of leaked imagery, but we hadn't actually seen a moving vehicle. Um, and actually the footage was, was CGI footage, but it was so realistic, it fooled quite a few people, I'm sure. And since that point, we've seen quite a lot about the car going through a whole range of different dynamic drive testing and so on. And it's, a, for me, a really, really exciting car. I love the story behind the Grenadier, the way Jim Ratcliffe has pulled together a team to, to recreate this utilitarian 4x4 to fill what he thinks is a, a hole in the market. A car that can kind of do multiple jobs. It can do the school run, it can be a family vehicle, but most importantly, it can also fulfill that, that utilitarian agricultural commercial role. It's a true mud plugger. And up until now, one thing we haven't seen is what the interior is gonna look like. Now, about two or three hours ago, I got a call from the team at Ineos Grenadier and they said, Ped, we're releasing the footage of the interior tomorrow. Would you like access to the B-roll so you can put together a film and release it just after the embargo lifts so that your followers can see what the inside of the Grenadier is gonna look like? And of course, I jumped at the chance. So I've been putting together, over the last couple of hours, a short film showing you around the inside of the Ineos Grenadier. So why don't we have a look at that and then let's have a chat about what you think. Over the last 12 months, it's been great seeing more and more dynamic driving shots of the Ineos Grenadier, a true utilitarian 4x4. But up until now, one thing's been missing. We don't know what the interior is going to look like. But finally, Ineos have revealed the interior, and I can now give you a detailed view. Welcome to the interior of the Ineos Grenadier. Let's start with a bold and I'm sure quite controversial steering wheel. It's actually covered in horse saddle leather and is designed that over time it will mark and scratch and add character and patina to the interior. The car actually has two horns, one in the central boss of the steering wheel and the other little red toot button, a fun nod to the Ineos Grenadier's cycling team. The interior is designed with practicality in mind and it has hose-out rubber floor with drain plugs, splash-proof wipe-down switch gear, and hard-wearing anti-pile stain and water-resistant seats that don't need extra protection. All of the switches are widely spaced and clearly labeled. They've been designed to be easy to use when you're on the move, or if you're wearing gloves. The 12.3-inch touchscreen display houses the main NMI and incorporates Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and can also be controlled by the center console rotary dial. My favorite part of the interior is the overhead console. It reminds me of a helicopter. It has the controls for the diff locks, auxiliary power circuits and power isolator. And this layout allows the co-driver to operate auxiliary controls while the driver focuses on the driving. The Recaro seats look smart with heated front seats and full leather upholstery options available. The retail version has five Recaro seats with ISOFIX in the rear 
and the commercial version has a two or five seat layout. The two seat commercial version can take a Euro pallet and I'm sure can probably take a couple of sheep. I really like the design ethos around this new interior. Some nice design touches and a great choice of durable materials which should stand the test of time. So there you go. I would love to know what you think. Please put it in the comments below. For me, I really, really like it. I think it's edgy and controversial, and I'm pretty sure the design team have probably made it like that on purpose, because if people aren't talking about it, they've not done their job properly. I love the design ethos behind it. I love the fact it's been designed by people who actually use 4x4s. The switch gear's spaced out. It's been designed to be used when you're wearing a pair of gloves or if you've got muddy or wet hands. It's been designed to get muddy. You know, you can wash it out with a jet wash. You can not worry about marking the seats. And I think that's really important for that particular, that particular segment the car is aimed at. Now, I can't wait to see it for myself. Any of you that are going to the Goodwood Festival of Speed this coming weekend, Ineos Grenadier is going to be there. So you'll be able to take a good look yourself. And I, for one, when I get on site on Thursday, will be making a beeline for their stand because I can't wait to see the car up close and personal. I think it's a really, really exciting car. And now we've seen what the inside looks like. I'm pretty sure that there will be some manufacturers that are going to look at that car and worry because I, I really do think they've got lots and lots of things right about that car. Um, but yeah, very cool. I love the nods to the cycling team. There's also a nod to the sailing side of the Ineos Venture. There's basically uh, green and red markings on the car for port and starboard rather than left and right because of the nautical theme, obviously. So I love that too. And then just finally, the whole design approach around it being durable and built to last, it's got something like half the ECUs of comparable vehicles in its class. It even uses a normal key. It's not got keyless entry. You have to put a key in the lock to unlock the car. And I absolutely love that. It's almost like taking a retro step back. Um, you know, let's get rid of some of the technology that's kind of, you know, become commonplace in cars. And let's just make it easy to fix, easy to work with, easy to keep clean, easy to live with. Anyway, as I said, let me know what you think of the new Ineos Grenadier interior. I have to say a massive thank you to the team at Ineos Grenadier for letting me have access to this footage in time to put a video together to get it out on the day the embargo lifts. So huge, big thanks to them. But um, I'd love to know your thoughts. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this one. If you have done so, please give me a thumbs up. Comments below are always welcome. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to Petroped for plenty more content to come. And I'll see you on the next film, guys. But you take care. Drive safe.